Let's implement Gaussian splatting in Unity. What's Gaussian splatting? A differentiable rendering technique used for things like photorealistic scenes and the best available generative 3D. Step 1. Obtain a splat file. What's a splat file? Gaussian splats come in two formats, POI and splat. Splat is smaller and faster, so we'll use that. I found this stump. It's crooked, so I'll use this tool I made to fix it. Step 2. Unity. I'll use Unity 6.1 because it supports WebGPU. Let's load the splat data. Here's a scriptable object class with three arrays, positions, axes, and colors. Implement a load from file method that reads from the binary splat format into these three arrays. Now create a custom importer to automatically convert splat files to splat data objects. These arrays can have millions of entries, which crashes the Unity editor. So I'll write a custom inspector that just draws the count. Did any of that actually work? Let's visualize it with this script, Splat Gizmo Drawer, that iterates over every point, takes its position and color, and draws a sphere. This runs on CPU, so we shouldn't draw millions of points. I'll subsample it to a thousand. Create a game object, add the Splat Gizmo Drawer, assign the stump. It, it works. works. Maybe. Is this actually a stump? Increase the point count. Yep, that's a stump. It's really laggy. Turn that back down. Time for a break. Step 3. VFX Graph. We can't draw millions of points on CPU. We need to use GPU. Fortunately, Unity has a solution for that. VFX Graph. Install it. Create a single burst VFX Graph. Delete most of the template. And just render a single point. Yep, that's a point. Unfortunately, it only lasts a second. So in the update context, set H to 0. Now it lasts forever. Wow. But I don't want to render just one point. I want to render all of them. How do you actually get the splat data from the scriptable object to the VFX Graph? Create four properties. A uint called count and three graphics buffers. Position, axis, and color. Now create a script. Splat data binder. A VFX VFX binder that binds splat data from the scriptable object to the VFX graph. Also revise the splat data to allocate the graphics buffers. Don't forget to add component, expand this box, and assign the stump. Now these arrays are accessible from VFX graph. How? Assign count directly, increase capacity to millions, and for the graphics buffers, use a sample graphics buffer node with the particle ID. Now convert position to world space and assign the position. Do the same for color and alpha. Let's see if it works. Not bad. Currently these points are all perfect circles facing the same direction. To fix this, I'll also sample the axis buffer, three axes per particle, transform the them to world space and assign them. The points are really tiny, so set size to 6. Now the points are rotated and skewed, as they should be, but there's an issue. When looking parallel to a point, it disappears. This isn't how Gaussians should behave. They should look like 3D blobs from any direction. To approximate this, I'll reorient the quad with this custom HLSL node that finds the best axis pair to suit the current view direction. This creates some noticeable flickering, but we'll ignore that. Now instead of drawing dots, let's draw Gaussians with a custom shader graph. I'll add an input color assigned directly to color. Then for alpha, take the quad UV, use tiling and offset, so instead Instead of 0 to 1, the coordinates go from negative 2 to 2, the approximate range of a Gaussian distribution. Then I'll take the dot product of this with itself to get the square magnitude, then take the negative exponent of this to get a Gaussian distribution. I'll multiply this by the input alpha and connect it to output alpha. Now back in VFX graph, I'll switch the output unlit quad to an output shader graph quad. Choose the Gaussian shader graph and connect the current color. Let's see if it works. It doesn't. I forgot some things. Convert color space from gamma to linear. Set render face to both. Check supports VFX graph. Set VFX graph sorting mode to auto. Distance the camera. Turn off tone mapping and replace the skybox with solid black. Now it works. Wow. Now what? Let's blow it up by setting a limited lifetime, adding some turbulence scaled by initial height, then multiplying color based on distance from the initial position and decreasing size over lifetime. All this code is open source. Link in description.